Hi, y'all. In this video, I'm going to talk about, in a rambly kind of fashion, two subjects that are important to me, law enforcement and uh, the news media, or what I should say is reporting on things that have happened in the world. Now, um, on Twitter or in real life or whatever, I'll, when I get in conversations about the proper role of law enforcement, uh, the proper function of the news media, um, whenever one wants to start talking about some bad shit that cops are doing somewhere, uh, you get people who are from two different camps. The, the one group of people who think the cops are evil, evil, evil. Uh, for an example of this, V. Monroe did a video today about uh, a no-knock uh, warrant service where the, they threw in a, a flash grenade and it burned an infant. And he was reporting that uh, some news website called The Daily Sheeple had an article talking about how the cops, in their defense of their actions, are actually blaming the infant for being there in the way of the flash grenade, the flashbang, when it went off, causing his own, that the infant and his potential criminal activities, or her potential criminal activities, I think it was a boy, uh, that is the real cause of it. Now, of course, the officer said nothing like this. So I went and read the news article, and it's quoting a guy uh, from some blog or whatever, and he's like one of these really, everything the government does seems to just be wrong. It, it, so this is the type of guy who refers to law enforcement, not as police officers, not, not as people who, uh, you have a profession where, anyway, I don't, I don't want to characterize it. He, just re, he refers to uh, local law enforcement as a, something like a fourth branch, a subsidized branch of the federal government. He variously refers to them as the stormtrooper, the brown shirts, and then the federally subsidized Einsatzgruppen. In other words, local law enforcement is the death squad, I guess in like mercenary fashion, of the federal government. I didn't know that. I mean, of course there are incidents where law enforcement are out doing things and people get killed, uh, sometimes for good reasons, sometimes for bad reasons, but this is just uh, over-the-top rhetoric. But V. Monroe reports this shit as though it's true. I went and read the documents from the, uh, the, the pleadings and, and the, the case, not a single word in there says, by the way, judge, <laughs> that fucking infant is the reason he got burned. If he hadn't have been there and potentially engaging in criminal activity, nothing, nothing, nothing like that was said. But anyway, so you get that group whenever you want to talk about law enforcement, the I hate them, uh, fuck the cops, and then you get the other, uh, the other end of the spectrum is that uh, you need to do what the cops say and pretty much... Uh, not exactly that the cops can never do anything wrong, but just the whole people who, whenever you say something like this, one cop raped and murdered a girl right on shift, and they go, oh, yeah, well, look at all the other cops who didn't do that. I didn't say anything about the other cops. I said this guy raped and killed a girl on shift. That is bad juju. Anyway, so it's very difficult uh, because no matter what you say, if you, if you aren't an extremist on this, uh, you're going to be seen as heretical by some little provincial group of nut jobs. Uh, frequently, uh, you run into the latter group of nut jobs in the news media, uh, variously. Anyway, whatever. So, uh, there are, when I'm on Twitter or in real life or whatever, and I'm talking about some of the, the parade of horribles that law enforcement uh, officers and various agencies are getting up to, uh, I will frequently have it thrown in my face that, you know, you need to respect what they do. The people who don't know I work in law enforcement, for example, they don't know I used to be on that side of the thin blue line, and they're going to lecture me on the, the appropriate deference that law enforcement officers are due because of the hazards that the job has. Now, of course, I don't deny that the job has hazards. Uh, many of them are uncommon, if not out, if the uh, mix of the particular dangers aren't absolutely unique, they're at least extremely rare, but uh, among professions. So there are dangers that go with it. But I'll hear things like, do you know how many officers get shot and killed on traffic stops every year? I'm like, actually, I do. As, as, it, as it happens, I, I, uh, every time a police officer in the United States is killed within a few hours of the death, I know about it. Uh, I, I do follow this subject, and I can tell you it's not that many at all. And I can tell you that that fact is true because another fact is true. Almost no police officers get killed. It's uh, between 1 and 200 every year. Back in the 70s, you had between 2 and 300. Uh, it's usually just a little over 100, but sometimes it'll be like 150, 160. So it's between 100 and 200, uh, the middle range there and below, every year. Um, 
so when I say not not many at all, as it turns out, you know, three or four or five, maybe ten a year, something like that. Uh, each incident where someone is killed is, is sad for some people, uh, but you don't need to overstate the problem to notice the problem. Some law enforcement officers get killed. That is bad. You don't need to be hyperbolic about it. Uh, some officers do shitty things. It is absolutely true. That doesn't make the uh, that doesn't make them death squads. It doesn't make them Nazis. It doesn't make them stormtroopers. It doesn't uh, mean they're they're they want they're lurking outside of your window waiting to break in to to I guess rape your dog and steal your kids or whatever. But you get the the various groups. And when when you're dealing with these people on these two extremes of the camp, it, it's really difficult to be a little bit heretical. So if I say something like, the job has some certain dangers. But the job is not an overly dangerous profession. Oh, so you're saying there no, there, it's not dangerous at all. Yes, when I say that it has some dangers, but let's not overstate it. Clearly, I'm saying there are no dangers at all. Like when I say not all that many police officers get killed, uh, some people hear that as, as being tantamount to my saying that no police officers get killed. And I'm saying nothing of the sort. I'm just trying, I'm not trying to be a moderate. I'm trying to be accurate in what it is that I'm claiming. There's something like uh, full-time sworn personnel, like a million police officers. A hundred of them get killed. That's like a really tiny percentage of them. It's still like a hundred and some odd tragedies, sure. But the fact, <laughs> but it's that many out of a pool of a million. Anyway, so uh, there's something called the Officer Down Memorial page. Uh, there's Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund. All these different organizations that really track downed officers. Uh, there was about two weeks ago, two, yeah, about two weeks ago, maybe three. Uh, when the Baltimore uh, riots were going on, a, a, a journalist decided to write one of those uh, touching, retarded stories, the human interest story about an officer in Mississippi was shot, was gunned down. Uh, though they're separated by mile, thousands of miles, they face common danger, that kind of stupid shit. Really vacuous uh, news that is nevertheless news. One of the things that I do when I read news articles, if they're about uh, anything of, of moment, or they purport to be about something of moment, very often what I'll do is I read it, and then I bookmark it, and I set it off to the side, and then I, I'll go check this out again in a couple of weeks. And to see, uh, at the end of those couple of weeks, when I think back to what I remember of the article, what's my impression of what it was that I read? And this is one of the ways that the, the media... I can't prove that they lie to people because it's really difficult to prove what they uh, have going on in their heads, but it's one of those, everybody kind of knows that they know how to tell a story. I mean, it's called a news story. It's not called a news random assemblage of unrelated facts. They tell you particular things in a particular way because they want you to draw certain conclusions. And one of the great dishonesties of the news media is that little, little uh, way they have of lying by saying true things. Now, sometimes they just omit things accidentally. Some things aren't known to them. I'm not talking about that. I mean, just this recurring pattern on particular subjects where they seem to omit inconvenient facts. Facts that, if they put into the news article, would change how you will exp how, what you will think about it when you walk away from it, and uh, more importantly, what you will remember about what's true uh, in a couple of weeks. So this one article was on the cops being shot. Now I went and uh, I went back and read it again yesterday, and the uh, the statements made by the the news desk editor who wrote this piece they're all true statements. Uh, everything that she says is is uh, is true, and yet the impression of the article is that she anyway I'll get to it in a second. So um, the National Law Enforcement Officer Memorial Fund puts out every year at the end of the year how many officers got killed this year. Uh, how they got killed, what was the leading cause of death among police officers. Um, if you ask people what do you think the leading cause of uh, deaths for law enforcement officers is, uh, without variation, in my experience, the answer you'll get is gunfire, which is just not true. Um, the Generally, the leading cause of police officers every year is motor vehicle collisions. That's number one. Number two uh, vacillates uh, depending on the time of the year and the, I mean, the changes year to year. It is generally number two is uh, gunfire. Occasionally, it's uh, not. Uh, something else will, will exceed gunfire. But the three things that never change, uh, except for something like on September 11th, you know, buildings collapsing on people, terrorist attack, that tends to occupy the field. So barring something like that, 
the three content the ten, uh, the contenders that you get year after year after year for top killers of comps, uh, and generally in this order: motor vehicle collisions, gunfire, and no one ever guesses the third. Never had someone who doesn't work in the field just guess it. They they never get it right. They think oh assaults, stabbings, uh, beatings, things of that nature. No heart attacks. And I, I don't mean that it's like there's just a bunch of geriatric cops running around, you know, like uh, um, Barney Fife the later years, and they keel over. I'm talking about people who are 23 years old, 24 years old, 30 years old, 35, 40, uh, relative, young, young men in some cases, uh, and reasonably young to middle-aged guys in a lot of cases uh, of these heart attacks. And there are various reasons for this, but I won't go into those. So anyway... Motor vehicle collisions, gunfire, heart attack. Although for this year, up until just the other day, heart attacks were leading gunfire. So that, uh, that was a little bit interesting this year. Well, the media helps propagate this false impression because they want to talk about law enforcement saving lives. It, it, it is all, always, 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 it comes back to this, this idea of guns, 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 and violence, despite the fact that that's not the leading cause of death of police officers. You want to save a lot of cops' lives? Um, take Rewrite the law so they can't exceed the speed limit. They don't get the little lights that let them go faster. They don't get a siren. They don't get to run uh, red lights. They don't get to run code 3 to things. That would save a lot more officers' lives. But in that kind of conversation, people immediately recognize that there's a, there's a goal at the end. Uh, the reason they have these these powers, the, the reason they have this right to do these things in certain circumstances that other people don't have the right to do, is because of a call for help somewhere and you need to get the help there quickly. Everyone gets that. So they immediately avert to the consequences of what would happen if officers didn't have that. And they'll say, look, these 40 officers, 40, 50 officers uh, who die every year, 60 officers who die every year from this, um, you know, sad though that is, it is a good price to be paid for what we get in the long run. Uh, you know, the, the potential of getting help there on time is worth sacrificing a few lives. I completely agree. But then we get to guns. It's, we need to get more control. Well, but there are some consequences there, too. Uh, the ability of people to protect themselves uh, in the, say, the interval of time between when the call gets to the police and they manage to get there, assuming they haven't wrapped themselves around a tree or whatever on the way there. Uh, people having firearms in their own homes to protect themselves. That is a benefit. There are, of course, costs that go with that, too. But uh, when you deal with the lamestream media... The benefits on that seem to just uh, disappear. Anyway, so the CEO, uh, Craig Floyd, of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund, uh, says, says this um, uh, last year at the, their little release. With the increasing number of ambush-style attacks against our officers... I'm deeply concerned that a growing anti-government sentiment in America is influencing weak-minded individuals to launch violent assaults against the men and women working to enforce our laws and keep our nation safe. Craig, if you happen to be watching this, I'll just say, it isn't a growing anti-government sentiment. It is, in some places, a growing anti-cop sentiment. The two aren't the same things. One is an enforcement agency of the government. The fact that people don't like the enforcers doesn't mean that they dislike the government, whose policies these people are unjustly enforcing. Now, there are things, there are particular, uh, I've talked about this, uh, there are particular, well, you know, qualified immunity, if you have been watching this, Craig. Things like that do piss people off, because you, you run into these outrageous things, uh, the cops do, and then they don't wind up being held uh, civilly liable for their conduct. Uh, so there are various policies like that. No-knock warrants, all kinds of things that do ruffle people's feathers, but that doesn't, that doesn't indicate a general dislike of the government. It's some particular things. But in a lot of communities, there's a lot of hatred towards law enforcement that is exclusively law enforcement's fault. It is, uh, well... I, Whenever you want to talk about the nature of law enforcement, the relationship between the officers and the citizens whom they're either serving or oppressing, you will invariably get this kind of thing. Well, yeah, that's sad, but focus on this, this increasing problem that's facing law. It's always increasing when it really isn't. And there, there isn't an increased number of ambush-style attacks against our officers. It fluctuates. Some years you'll get three, some years you'll get five. It'll go back down. It'll go back up, it'll go, but there's no, like, uh, well, the, the trend over the last couple of decades is that everything is down. Crime across the board, pretty much, some fluctuations here and there, 
down, violent crime in particular down, uh, the, the hazards that are visiting that are visited upon law enforcement generally down. But you get this minor spike for like a month, and oh, it's increased. We need we need more power. We need to do this. We need to change policies. A uh, couple hundred uh, people get uh, beaten by the cops. Well, we'll deal with that later. Anyway, so then he goes on. Enough is enough. We need to tone down the rhetoric and rally in support of law enforcement and against lawlessness. The problem with this kind of proposition is you act as though the lawlessness is external to law enforcement. It isn't. Law enforcement officers come from the same pool of people, uh, the same communities that the departments serve. You get some of the same shitbags who wind up getting a badge. And one of the things that is most frustrating for a, you know, a private citizen is how fucking difficult it is to get rid of corrupt cops. It is not easy to do. Uh, anyone who works in law enforcement knows uh, that generally you can't, it's not legal to just outright fire a police officer, except for the most extreme kinds of circumstances. And even then it's, well, we'll put them on paid leave, we'll have an investigate, that kind of thing. It, it's really, really, really frustrating, particularly when you get people who want to come up and defend it and say, well, you know, officers are due, are, they're owed their due process. You know what? How about this? Give those officers the precise same due process they thought the people they were beating were owed. Which is to say, if they don't think the people they're sworn to protect and serve are owed any due process, then they have forfeited their very own. But they don't do that. That's not our constitutional system. And therein lies a rob that really pisses people off. There is a different set of rules. There's the book that applies to the cops and the books that applies to the hoi polloi. And uh, which side is which is not that, uh, not that difficult to figure out. That's very, very frustrating. Anyway, so uh, let me go to the uh, article on uh, CNN written by Faith uh, somebody or other. Police killings separated by many miles. And then she tries to tie all that shit together. This, this is, a, what do they call it, yellow journalism? It's exaggerated or sensational, whatever. Uh, separated by many miles, united by common dangers, that kind of shit. Just waiting for it to load here. So, um... Sorry, I have to scroll up. Mia culpa. That is, I believe, Spanish for Mia Culpa. So, uh, it's written, this is written by Faith, and I, I'm probably going to mispronounce her last name if I can scroll up on this damned thing. Faith Karimi, K-A-R-I-M-I. -I. I don't mean to mispronounce her name. Anyway, uh, all of the, the assertions that she makes in here are true. Like, she'll say, someone said, so, according to someone, this was said. True. The statement that was said by that other person is false, but she's accurate in saying this person said that. The, 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 the problem here is in the, the uncritical way she just uh, believes whatever it is that she's told. So two officers slain during a traffic stop in Mississippi over the weekend add to a grim tally. Well, we need to put in some emotionally laden words there. A grim tally. Well, of course it's grim because what you're counting are dead bodies. But, as we'll see in a moment, the uh, in shootings thousands of miles apart under different circumstances, at least 10 law enforcement officers have been killed so far this year nationwide. Yes, it is. the tally is grim because you're counting dead bodies, but then it's ten dead bodies. Uh, anyway, it, it, I don't really have a great quibble about this, except that it's, I just don't like the emotion. I, I, I like objective reporting, not, not storytelling. And I realize it's a new story, there's a narrative, but you can tell a story without it being sounding like you're trying to write a novel and really get people involved in it at an emotional level when the facts alone, just stating them, doesn't seem to do that. Uh, anyway, thousands more face the same dangers and unknowns. Last year, the number of law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty increased, according to the Washington-based National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund. That's true. Uh, 2014, more officers were killed than in 2013. Nowhere in this article does she say that uh, this trend continues, but... Um, Looking back on this a couple weeks later, I walked. I remember thinking after reading that, uh, there's there's an implication here that this uh, this problem is increasing. And this I the thing I, the quote I read you earlier is part of the the source material that was given here. Uh, I followed it back and to find out where this number comes from. Anyway, 
So nowhere in here does she say that this, this law enforcement deaths are continuing to increase, but that's the sense I got from it when I read it. Anyway, remember, they're telling you a story. They want you to believe certain things, and I'm pretty sure that this is a news organization, not a history organization. So there's a reason that she's mentioning this. That, uh, the nonprofit group found that 128 uh, enforcement officers died in 2014 compared to the 102 the year before. These numbers include a variety of incidents, including illness, accidents, and shootings. The number killed by firearms last year was 50, a rise from 32 the year before, according to the group. It's true. Uh, going back and reading their pre the, group, the organization's press release, they did say that. Unfortunately, that statement is false, and the way that you know it's false is going by, uh, going back and actually reading the organization's data, not their press releases. And uh, I happen to have known this was false because of other organizations that I am either a member of or that I follow that keep account of this, too. It was, even according to uh, the Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund in 2014, the number of officers shot and killed was 48. If you go to, like, uh, ODMP, I think it's uh, 49. Anyway, it's not 50. It, the you might be thinking, well, what's what's the deal being off one or two officers? Remember, there. Whenever you talk about this, they always want to push the narrative that the leading cause, the leading problem is guns, 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 and because so few officers die, one officer, one number off here, one number off there, it is not a trivial error to make. Now, if you, if you had like a thousand killed and you're off. Uh, the, the margin of error there, the error that you've introduced is very slight. When it's 15 officers killed by this means and you're off by one, that's a significant part of your data set. And the reason for this is, is the Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund, in addition, said that gunfire, gun, I'm sorry, gun-related incidents were the leading cause of death of officers in 2014, which is false. The leading cause of death was motor vehicle collisions. There were 50 of those and 48 or 49, depending on uh, which officer wasn't being counted, who was actually uh, killed. Um, they may not have counted an accidental shooting. I don't know exactly. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't explain uh, that uh, in any great detail, which person was excluded and particularly why, but whatever. So they're telling you something false, and they do this by, by your letting them get away with being off by one dead cop. You give, the, you give these people an inch, uh, they will take, well, they'll give you a mile in re return after they've bend you over. Bohica, bend over here, it comes again. Because when, whenever you're in law enforcement and something bad happens to the law enforcement community, the response is not ever, gosh, that was really sad. Whoa, you know, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa was I, whoa was I, whoa was I. And it's never left there. It's, this is terrible. We need new powers, or we need more money, or we need better equipment. They always need something to address the problem of three additional cops who got killed. I'm like, uh, no, actually you don't. That's what's called an aberration. Anyway, meanwhile, they're always needing more and more shit and investigating less and less, but whatever. So, uh, this is just a constant reminder of the dangers police work uh, of, I'm sorry, of the dangers of police work in this country, said Cedric Alexander, police chief in DeKalb County, Georgia. We can never, ever forget the dangers and what they put on the line for us every day. They deserve our support. The honorable ones deserve our support. The uh, wolves in sheep's clothing don't. I'm not saying anything about the officers who were killed. Anyway, so far this year, 42 law enforcement officers have died in various incidents. This, this was correct. Uh, as of when this was published, which I think was on the 11th. Including traffic-related deaths, the uh, Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund says. So anyway, if you go pull up their data sets, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can look at 32 and 2013 were shot and killed, or died in shooting-related incidents. And then uh, in 2014, it was 48, even though they published 50. Now... I guess I'll explain a little bit. Sometimes the stats in a given year don't reflect incidents that happened in that year. For example, an officer may have been shot two years ago and has been uh, in a coma uh, for two years, and then a bullet, you say the a bullet fragment dislodged, went into an artery and caused their death, and then they die, and that'll get credited towards this year's statistics uh, as opposed to going back and saying, oh, well, you know, for the last five, ten years, people have thought that and you know, I don't know, in 1983, whatever it was, 22 were, died from this means, but no, we're going to slip another number in there. Uh, 
it, we just credit it here because what's being tracked isn't uh, incidents that happened. It's number of people who died uh, approximately from deaths approximately caused by uh, having been officers, irrespective of when the incident happened. For example, you had officers who died from cancers they got caused by working uh, uh, Ground Zero uh, some, uh, in the wake of the September 11th attacks, and when they die, they get credited towards this year, even though everybody understands the incident happened uh, some while back. So here, here's the the where they're trying to get you to think of increasing death, even though they're not saying it's increasing this year, and then they tie in the emotional hook. The deaths come amid high tensions after a series of fatal shootings nationwide of unarmed African-American men by police officers. Uh, we've got to tie this into the Baltimore riots because clearly something happened in Baltimore. People there are pissed off. Obviously, uh, what you naturally think of is a guy, as an officer being shot on a traffic stop in Mississippi because reasons. Protesters have taken uh, to the streets to express outrage over the killings, but Alexander says officers don't have it easy. Across this country right now, police are being questioned about the way they do their jobs, but we can never, ever forget the dangers and what they put on the line for us every day. Yeah, that, that's a nice distraction. In the same way, whenever you want to talk about uh, women who have filed false allegations of rape, you always get feminists to show up and go, yeah, you know what, what we really need to be focusing here on, in this case of this woman filing this false allegation of rape, if they'll even concede that it's false, some, people, some of them don't even believe it's possible for it to be false, but whatever, they'll say, what the real thing we need to talk about is the fact that rape happens. Well, you know, that is actually an issue that needs to be addressed. Rape does happen, and it shouldn't happen, but it does, and that needs to be talked about. Simultaneously, fake uh, false allegations do happen, and therefore they also need to be talked about. And it is a complete distraction to show up in one conversation uh, and, and try to use the other in order to deny the significance of whichever one was actually being discussed. Now, if you want to discuss both, that's fine. But here, just like in the other one I mentioned, we need to rally around. It's that rallying thing that is the problem. We can talk about the fact that what officers legitimately need uh, for their own safety to perform the functions they're supposed to perform. Perfectly valid conversation excellent conversation, a very interesting conversation, a very detailed conversation, and a very important conversation. They're spending our tax dollars after all, and some of them do get killed. Many more get injured. Uh, but we don't need to rally around them when what we're talking about is the abuses that come from within that profession. Stop trying to... to oh, the man behind the curtain, you know, stop looking over there. You've spotted Mr. Whoever back there. And so now let's go through a list of all the officers who are being killed. So what this lady didn't say in that story that she could have said, it's important to note that actually, uh, just like the Law Enforcement Officer Memorial Fund, ODMP, any organization that tracks this, anyone who pays attention to the statistics, law enforcement deaths this year have decreased. They are down year to date uh, from what they, in other words, 2014 was an aberrant year, or so it seems so far. Um, and they're talking about the increased ambush-style attacks. They said, not since 2012 if we had this many killed. Not since 2012. So two years? Yeah, just like, it fluctuates. You'll get like five this year, three the next, six the following, two the fall. I mean, it, it, it depends on where you want to look and how, how narrowly you want to cabin the period of time you want to look at. I guess if you want to do it... Um, well, it's always on this, this shifting scale. Like, if law enforcement deaths are actually down, like they currently are, we'll just talk about the last complete year. Uh, but if they were up, then what you would talk about is the fact that they're up year today. I mean, it's just that um, you can't prove this is what they're doing, but everybody knows the, the game of three-card Monty they're playing. But they always have the, the plausible deniability of saying, well, um, I just I, I omitted it, I forgot it which is sometimes true, but everybody knows that when you consistently are doing this, that isn't an oversight. That's not a one-off. That's not even a, a trend. That's a fucking tradition. And that is one of the reasons that uh, I really despise the media. For as, as important it is to have a free uh, media, it is really an, uh, an unpleasant reality that you have to accept a lot of this kind of nonsense for the very extremely occasional case where they get it right. And it's the, it is the, the want for, the hope for, the wish for, the longing for 
uh, that one extremely rare off, uh, you know, one off event of moment that they get it right, that you're like, oh, my faith has been restored mildly. But, you know, all that being said, I, I still uh, maintain um, what, I, what I said in response to the Ferguson uh, debacle with law enforcement and when they threw gas at the, at the media and broke down their cameras because they didn't want the media there to film them while they were dealing with the fallout from their corrupt activities earlier. And I really do think that the death penalty should apply there. Uh, law enforcement officers, government agencies, government officers uh, in many different uh, areas, but law enforcement in particular, because of the amount of power that they have, the obligations that they're supposed to have, but they're legally excused from in all kinds of ways, uh, I think that the oath is uh, something that should be taken extremely seriously. And indeed, uh, a question that every police officer should ask himself before he goes to work every day is, hey, look in the mirror before you go to work if you happen to be in law enforcement, ask yourself, am I content to be killed today to uphold my oath? And if you're not, leave the profession. Get, put in your, whatever your agency requires of notice. Uh, and it doesn't matter for my, uh, it, it doesn't matter whether it's for a particularly important reason or a particularly trivial reason. It is an obligation of the job to, sac to leave forfeit your life for the preservation of a, a president, of a governor, of a small child, and, here's the difficult part of the job, of the worst serial killing child rapist ever to have lived. You are equally obligated to leave forfeit your life at a moment's notice to protect all of those people without any consideration whatever about the relative value of that person to society. That is the type of absolute fidelity to a principle that comes with swearing out the oath that law enforcement officers take. And if you're going to abuse that position, then I think that we should still hold you to that you have to leave your life forfeit. That's why I'm in favor of the death penalty for officers who abuse their position for their own nefarious ends. They should all be subject to the death penalty. Of course, at the discretion of a jury. Jury, uh, If the jury wants to be merciful, lucky you. If they don't want to be merciful, well, tough shit. You should have thought about that before uh, you went uh, around abusing your position. Um, just, I don't know how long I've been doing this. The, uh, there was a video I was watching the other day of two officers uh, chasing a guy and they get the guy on the ground, and one officer comes in and starts kicking him. And I, I was like, looking at the other officer who was bent over, and I was like, yes! And he stands up and joins in the kicking, and I was like, no! Exactly the wrong answer. The way that should have gone down, well, the way it should have gone down is that neither officer should have thought that it was their proper role, that it was permissible for them to kick anybody uh, who was in, in a, in a uh, position of surrender. But... Putting that off to the side, after the first officer jumped in and started kicking the guy, uh, the the range of actions that should have been taken by the second officer, who I was rooting for for like a fraction of a second, the way that should have gone down is that the first officer, while he was chambering his next kick, should have had uh, the other officer's sidearm at his head, ordering him on the ground. And if the guy didn't comply, he should have been killed straight out. I am absolutely serious. I took my... I took my oath extremely seriously on the job. Now, if people are off the clock and they go out and they do something, look, okay, what you do uh, off the clock, not under the color, not uh, uh, acting under the color of law, that just treat you like a normal citizen, uh, everything else. But what you do with respect to your official position and the way you use that for various nefarious uh, purposes or do it while you're on the job or whatever, uh, that's a different ball game. And while you are using the powers of that office, to do things to the citizenry. Uh, I took that extremely seriously. And I, I've been on traffic stops uh, or various incidents where um, officers have intervened to forcibly restrain other officers who looked like uh, they would not be able to constrain their anger. Now, on the one hand, it is every officer's uh, affirmative obligation to remain in control of their emotions, um, but people do falter. And it is every other officer's obligation to make sure that they keep the peace. That applies equally to the hoi polloi, you know, the citizens, and, crucially, your fellow officers. 
And the, the way that you, you get um, incidents where officers, one will wind up kicking someone and the other officer fails to do something is specifically because they were either, either you've gotten really unlucky, you've just gotten two officers who are really good at getting away with shit, that's a possibility, or more likely what it is, is that you have a command climate that is indifferent to these kinds of things, where no matter what the complaints are that come in, the refrain is just like what I started this video out with. We need to rally around our officers because the job is so dangerous. Everybody gets that. Band of brothers, rah, rah, rah. It has fucking limits. Now, I was fortunate to have always worked in organizations where the command uh, structure was such that there was no room for that kind of shit. Uh, misconduct uh, on duty, you, you were relieved of duty right then. Give us, give us your hardware. Uh, if, if, if you have an issued vehicle, it's stay in here, call someone to pick you up. Uh, if, you, if you take a pool car, I guess, uh, go home. Don't call us. We'll call you. And this is over... Uh, I think I've talked about this. Uh, it, it didn't matter whether it was a big event, uh, like um, use of force, or something trivial like using your com your government computer to look at things that you shouldn't be looking at. I mean, I was. There happens to have been uh, a government website. Uh, yeah, as you know, government websites end in .gov or .w. You know, whatever. Uh, where the fe it's federal will be .gov. If it's state, it'll be .dot whatever the state is. Um, but. <laughs> There was a, a civilian, a, a regular, ordinary website that had exactly the same lead-in, except it was .com or .net or whatever it was instead of .gov. And uh, so I was mindlessly typing away at my computer to go look at the government website, but I typed in uh, instead of .gov, whatever I typed in the .com, and it was a porn site. And I'm like, oh my god! So I immediately call the IT people to let them know. Uh, look, I just went to this porn site on my government computer, uh, not for any particular reason. Uh, I just mistyped dot com, uh, dot com said dot .gov. Uh, I'd like to just report this. I'll contact my super... I mean, it, because I knew... One, I would have done it anyway, because uh, I would like, hey, if you see some weird activity, here's what happened. Uh, just to give the IT people a heads up. And that, that's one thing, just a personal code there. And, the sec and secondly, is the command climate was such that if you're doing that, you're gone. That's that's it. And they they don't play this. Let's you know you get a do over. You're not in a position of of a high school student uh, or someone you know in his own leisure time going off and having crosswords with someone in, in a way that everyone says oh it was inappropriate but we all understand. You are a government official working in a position where you have a gun that we trust you to use sensibly that you have a tremendous amount of power and discretion. You don't, you don't have any margin for these kinds of boneheaded um, excesses. You don't get to do that. It's a command climate where if you break the rules, you are just gone. We will get rid of you as quick as we fucking can. Um, and I, I love that. One of the things I would like to talk about uh, here is just, I guess, in parting, is this uh, notion that this I hear about law enforcement being militarized, the militarization of law enforcement, by which people mean to say uh, uniform. They're getting camouflage outfits. They're getting certain kinds of firearms or uh, other other kinds of uh, equipment that's typically used by the military. It looks more more soldierly than it does law enforcemently. Is a word. Is to a word. Um, I think we could actually use a little bit more of militarization of law enforcement, by which I don't mean to say equipment, I mean to say discipline and obligation. One of the things that I liked most about having served in the military is uh, a very tight command structure. Very, you know, uh, I liked the structure, the organization, and that you, know, you get up at this time, you be here at this time, don't be late. In fact, you need to be 15 minutes early. If you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. Uh, you get counsel for that. I mean, I, I liked that. There were, you knew what your responsibility was, you knew what your obligations were, and you were always given an amount of authority sufficient to carry out your obligations. And actually, usually just a little bit less because they understand that if, if it's just a tiny, tiny stretch of additional authority that you might require to meet an obligation, you'll just go ahead and take it. So they just build in that Murphy factor right away, understanding human nature uh, as it is. And this kind of militarization, the, the discipline, the obligation, uh, the rigidity of compliance 
is not something that exists in, in law enforcement generally, and it's something that should. It should exist, uh, generally. I remember, oh, I don't want to have all these anecdotes. One of them was, uh, anyway, it was like, well, you know, if uh, you're on patrol and they tell you to drive around using your left foot on the accelerator, the, the the proper response to that isn't to go sit down and use your right foot on the accelerator and hope you don't get caught. It's to just do what you're told uh, as a departmental um, uh, policy. And you follow all the policies, no matter how silly you think they are, unless, of course, you think that it violates the law, in which case you are affirmatively obligated to refuse to obey it. Uh, the same thing in the military. Uh, you know, you obey the orders of the president and the officers appointed over me, however, comma, uh, you have an affirmative obligation to ignore all unlawful orders. And uh, anyway, that kind of obligation would be wonderful to see. The, there, there is one of, the, one of the most beautiful things that you can see is in military operations, there will be some dick measuring contest or whatever, and to watch the discipline of guys standing, standing to, uh, knowing that the other group of people that might want to kill them is right there, and even if they're actively uh, being engaged, but not you know not directly, not direct fire, but you're getting whatever it is. Uh, they, in other words, they could be shooting. They, they have a justification to be shooting, but they've been given an order to hold their fire, and they stand there and they don't shoot. That takes a lot of discipline and a tremendous amount of trust in, in the, uh, the wisdom of your superiors and a fidelity to your obligation to follow all lawful orders. One of the obligations in the military and in law enforcement is to leave forfeit your life, sometimes for no particularly good reason at all, other than it is your obligation. And if you aren't comfortable with that in law enforcement, you should get out of the field. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think that's why the death penalty should be an available option for juries to impose uh, against corrupt officers who abuse their office, beat people, those kinds of things, manufacture charges and whatnot. Uh, because you, it's part of the deal. When you swear out that oath, it's, and I will die for no particular reason if I have to, uh, to, to see to it that I uh, hold up my oath. And if you can't do it, well, I think that we should be able to come back uh, in retrospect and look at it and go, well, you know, uh, you didn't make that bargain with us and we're going to hold your feet to the fire. Anyway, those are some of my rambly thoughts. You guys have a wonderful day.